The world tells us that having courage is all about being strong, brave, and near perfect. But what if being courageous is less about putting on your superhero cape and more about having the strength to give grace? Stepping outside your comfort zone to be vulnerable and being the kind of hero who isn't afraid to stand up for others and put them first. This is the kind of courage that will help us make changes in our own lives and work together towards transforming the world. Good morning and welcome to worship with Titusville United Methodist Church. My name is Emily Wilton and I am the pastor here at Titusville UMC. We're delighted that you've chosen to spend your Sunday morning or whatever time you may be worshiping with us. If you'd like to, if you're new and visiting especially, uh, if you'd like to say hi in the comments and let us know where you're tuning in from, that would be great. You can also contact us through our website and we would love to connect with you that way. Um, the announcements this morning were included on the slides at the beginning of the service, so if you missed those, I encourage you to go back and just take note of the announcements. I have been away for the last couple of weeks and I was on some much needed uh, clergy renewal and rest leave. So, I am delighted to be back with you worshiping today, but I know that a lot has happened since I was last with you, um, and I want to address that as we start our worship here today. This is a very difficult, intense, and divided time in our country. As those who pledge allegiance to Christ and no one else, friends, I call you to continue to keep this country in prayer especially as the inauguration approaches this week. The kind of violence and threat to democracy that we saw on January 6th is simply unacceptable. We need to hold those, especially those who feel driven to such acts, up in prayer. We need to pray that God will continue to work in their hearts and in all of our hearts to heal the division uh, that is so prevalent in this country that we might work towards understanding each other and towards a common good for all, truly all. Um, so I would ask, especially this week, that you be prayerful about the transition of power in this country. I do want to note that uh, you may have noticed I'm not in the sanctuary and you may have expected me to be in the sanctuary today for today's worship service. And the reason I'm not is because Jen and I, unfortunately, have been feeling a little bit under the weather uh, this past week, and we just wanted to be extra safe and make sure that we weren't putting anyone at risk. So we do expect to be back in the sanctuary next week, but we'll have to play it by ear um, and make sure that we are fully back to health before we um, expose ourselves to anybody. That said, let's take a few moments of quiet to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. And in that time, I invite you to really absorb the message that you are loved and you are enough, no matter what the world may tell you or even what you may sometimes tell yourself. You are loved and you are enough. You are called enough by the God who has created all that is. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. God has called us to gather together as beloved children. We come ready to share our authentic selves, our hearts, with God and one another. Wherever we are on our faith journey, God meets us right where we are, calling us out from isolation and fear into sacred community. 
We come to humbly praise and worship the one who chose vulnerability for the sake of perfect love. Amen. Our opening song this morning, Trouble in My Way, was written by Reverend Luther Barnes, a prolific gospel composer, singer, and preacher. God is many things to us, creator, father, mother, judge, healer, love, mystery. We bring our confession to this God, trusting that the fullness of the divine will hear our plea and grant us mercy that makes us whole again. With that trust, let us pray together. Holy God, we confess to you our pain the pain we have inflicted on others, the pain that keeps us awake at night, the pain of stranger across the world whose lives we cannot touch, and the pain of systems unyielding and untouchable. We invite you into our pain. We invite you to heal us and forgive us to undo what is crushing and wrong, 
to bring peace and even joy. Hear now our silent confession offered to you in hope. Friends, let us proclaim the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us go out into the world as people made new by God. And it's in that spirit as being made new that I offer you the opportunity to share signs of love, peace, and reconciliation with those whom you have gathered with this morning. Even though we have confessed our sins to the God that loves us and forgives us, and even though we may have offered signs of peace and reconciliation with those around us, we still feel what we feel. And if you're like me, you may still feel worry, stress, anxiety, concern, um, fear. Thank God that we have a God who knows what that is like and who invites us to lay it all down. Will you join me now as we make those steps forward to the throne of grace? Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the promises you have given us in Christ Jesus and in your holy scriptures that tell us that we do not need to fear, that tell us that even the hairs on our head are numbered, that tell us that if your son is willing to follow you all the way, should we not follow that example? Lord, we try to be like Jesus and we fail, but we, Thank you that you allow us and invite us to stand up and try again every day, every moment to do better and to walk more closely with you. This day, we are concerned about our homes and illness, about our families, about the world around us, our government, our country, the divisiveness, our neighbors who don't agree with us, our church who can't gather in your sanctuary, for so much that is broken in the world around us, sometimes that's all we see. So Lord, please help us to see the blessings that come among the struggles, among the sickness, and yes, Lord, even among grief when we lose people we love. We know that that is when you draw closest to us and when you invite us to turn and rest in you. This day, we are worried about our country and we ask that you would bless a transition of power in Washington and around the country that is peaceful, that is healing, that reconciles people who don't agree people who are never going to agree. Help us to give grace, to be open to other people's point of view. And yes, Lord, even when it appears that people are evil, we ask your grace to accept them as your children and to know that you love them no matter what. Thank God, because you love us no matter what. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory for those things that you have accomplished in each of our lives, in those things that you will accomplish. Help us to trust that you have plans for each of us, 
plans for good, plans to bless, and help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear, and spirits that are open to knowing what those blessings are, to claiming them, and to living through your promises. Again, even though we want to and we strive to, we have concerns on our hearts and in our lives that we want to give up to you. We are so worried about people we love who are exposed to this virus, those who have contracted it and are sick. And we, we thank you for those who have recovered and for the first responders who continue to put themselves in harm's way, for hospital workers and doctors and nurses and nursing home staff. And we pray that you would continue to cover them with your grace and mercy to keep them safe and to help them to heal others. For those among us that are suffering with COVID, Lord, we lift them up to you, those that we are aware of and those that only you know. Lord, this day we give you Kelly, Henry, Peyton, Dave, Dawn, Anthony, Caitlin, Edith, Michelle, Rosa, Marty, Tom, Megan, John, so many others, Lord. We know that you are holding them in your hand, and we pray that you would heal them and restore them to wholeness. And of course, Lord, we do care about people who are sick in other ways. And we ask that you would heal their bodies, heal their spirits where they need it, help caregivers that are working hard to provide um, comfort and, and care. And Lord, keep them close. We know of Becky, of Stan's niece, Jim, Kathy, Ruth, April, Emily, Jen, all who have either contracted illness or are suffering from injury, Lord, just bless them and heal them. And for those who have moved into a state of recovery, Lord, we give you grace, you give you the thanks and the praise that they are in that stage. We ask that you would continue to strengthen them. Don't let them become discouraged but help them to keep their eyes on the prize, to trust in you, to lean on you, and also to allow people who are helping them to have rest and respite. We think of April and Lexi and Glenn Crane's grandson, Beverly and Justin and Rocco, Allison, Mark, Denise, Mandy, Gina, and all those others that are in our lives and on our hearts this day that are struggling with emotional or mental or other physical problems that they have not shared with us. For those who are pregnant and particularly vulnerable for this time for virus, we ask a special blessing. We think of Rebecca at this time and ask that you would cover her and bless her and her baby. For those who are awaiting diagnoses and for test results and have a, a special state of anxiety, Lord, just give them peace, we pray. We ask that you would bless all those who are worried this morning, no matter what the concern, you have said nothing is too small or too big for you. And we thank you, Lord, that we have in the example in Jesus who knew exactly how big you are and it is in his name now that we pray together his prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
it feels a little strange to be introducing the special music since it's me singing uh, along with Gary Welbrock as we pre-recorded this a few weeks ago. Child of the Poor uh, combined with What Child Is This is a personal favorite. Many of you have heard us do this before. Um, I pray that uh, the lyrics and the meaning of this song um, bless you as it has blessed Gary and me doing it for you.
As we prepare now to hear the word proclaimed, we pray with me. Holy God, we pray that you will break through the walls we put up so that we might receive the word you have for us today through scripture and proclamation. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. Listen now for a word from the Lord. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven, on earth, and under earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Maxine. Please pray with me. Heavenly God, please use this time to share your message with your people. Be with us as we, as I speak these words, as those who are listening receive them. Grant us your Holy Spirit and help us to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. In the summer of 2019, I was part of a hospital chaplaincy internship with a group of 10 or so other students. At the beginning of the program, none of us knew what we were doing, but our supervisor believed in the value of cold calls, meaning we did not just visit patients who had requested a chaplain. We wandered the hospital floors, randomly knocking on doors, and starting conversations with whoever happened to be in the hospital room. All of us students were terrified by this prospect. We all wanted to spend days and days shadowing someone who knew what they were doing. We wanted to visit people who wanted us there. We were afraid of rejection from the patients, afraid we wouldn't really know what to say. And mostly, I think, we were afraid that we wouldn't really be able to do much to help. The only way to get through our fear was to do it. To become vulnerable to everything from awkwardness to rejection to failure. One thing that helped was our supervisor reminding us how vulnerable the patients themselves were when we knocked on their doors. These patients were poked and prodded all day by medical professionals and mostly bound to stay in their rooms, if not their beds. As chaplains with, free, with the freedom to come and go, we really had the upper hand in the chaplain-patient relationship. And if a patient rejected us, that might be the only choice that they'd been able to make for themselves that day. Giving them that chance to reject us might be as much a gift as any prayer or spiritual conversation we could offer. But the real magic happened when both chaplain and patient were courageous enough to be vulnerable in the moment. Vulnerable to each other's reactions and remarks. Vulnerable to how the conversation would unfold. 
Our world often contrasts courage and vulnerability. Courageous heroes have superpowers, or at least lots of weapons and armor. The vulnerable are the ones who need rescuing by these heroes. Being vulnerable means being weak, powerless, permeable. But when we turn to the Bible, a different picture emerges. The hero of our faith story, Jesus, shows us that to be truly courageous, we must also be willing to be truly vulnerable. Now, if you ask someone on the street in Jesus' day what it meant to be courageous, there's a good chance their answer would sound pretty similar to what you'd hear today. Jesus lived in Palestine when it was under the rule of the Roman Empire. In this empire, courage was asserted through war and dominance, through defeating one's enemies and winning out over them. We see a prime example of this in the story surrounding Jesus' birth. When Herod, the Roman ruler of Judea, was told that an infant king had been born, he promptly quashed any perceived threat to his rule by ordering the murder of all babies under the age of two around Bethlehem. This was strength in the world Jesus was born into. It is in stark contrast to this show of strength and courage that Jesus, our Messiah, was born. As Maxine and Gary sang for us, Jesus was born an infant, helpless and hungry, lowly and afraid. This child was vulnerable. Of course, it is one thing for a child to be vulnerable, as all children are to some extent by nature. But this vulnerability was not something Jesus grew out of. Rather, it was something he embodied throughout his entire life. Jesus did not build walls around himself to protect himself or to close others out, as I think many of us do as the harsh realities of life harden us. Jesus did not seem to get cynical or sarcastic. Jesus remained vulnerable, even to the point of death on a cross, as our scripture today tells us. We might even say vulnerability was baked into who Jesus was. Because if anyone could have shown bravado and macho style courage, it would have been Jesus. Jesus was not just a man but was the Son of God, himself divine. He could have easily defeated his enemies with one sentence or wave of the hand. He could have struck down those who wanted to crucify him, as those who surrounded the cross taunted and dared him to do. There are some people who no doubt would have been more persuaded by a Messiah who behaved in these ways who want their gods and demagogues to crush the enemy with this worldly version of courage. But Jesus shows us a different way. Our scripture this morning was an early Christian hymn. In it, Paul describes how Jesus, who was equal with God, did not exploit this position of power for his own benefit but rather was courageous enough to make himself vulnerable to the human condition. Jesus became incarnate and took on human form so that humankind could really come to know who God is. So we could know exactly what kind of God we are dealing with. This God is with us and for us, not over or against us. And more than that, when the world behaved as the world does toward Jesus, trying to destroy him because 
The world interpreted him as a threat to the power structures that were in place. Instead of overpowering his opponents, Jesus succumbed to death on a cross to show both his followers and his opponents alike that violence and death and hatred do not have the last word. In raising Jesus from the dead, God showed God's commitment to be with and for humanity, all of humanity, even in spite of itself, in spite of its power-hungry attempts at self-preservation. All of this might sound fine for Jesus, but what does it have to do with us? When Paul tells the Philippians to have the same mind as Jesus, to be self-giving and self-emptying as Jesus was, what does he mean? Why should they? And why should we? Vulnerability is an invitation. It's an invitation to togetherness and to true strength. Let's return to the story I told at the beginning of this message. On the days my fellow chaplain interns and I had the courage to be vulnerable to whatever we might find on the other side of that hospital room door. On the days the patients in those rooms had the courage to be vulnerable and share their stories with us. We found ourselves together, able to learn from each other, to move forward, to grow towards a new understanding of ourselves. I might even say a new understanding of life and God in the strength that we found together. The vulnerability and self-giving of the chaplain or patient was often contagious. It encouraged and opened up the vulnerability and self-giving of the other to create something new, stronger, and more beautiful than what could have been if we had remained closed off. On the other hand, I will admit there were days when some of us didn't have that courage to be vulnerable. When we would try and only go into the rooms where the person looked friendly, or maybe the patient was asleep and we could walk in and say a quick prayer and say, oh well, I tried. There were patients who some days did not have the courage to open up to us, and that's okay. But on those days and in those moments, we remained closed off, separate, small. So what does courage and vulnerability look like for you right now? What are the ways you are trying to protect yourself, but perhaps instead are closing yourself off to healing, growth, and relationships? I want to be clear that the kind of vulnerability I am talking about is not the vulnerability that occurs through an imbalance of power. I'm not suggesting it is a good thing that some people are more vulnerable than others to oppression or illness or abuse. I am talking about the kind of courage through vulnerability that is self-chosen. For some of us, this courage might look like asking for help or accepting help when it's offered. It might look like admitting we cannot do it alone. For some of us, it might mean sharing parts of our story that we've been afraid to tell before. For some, it might look like a willingness to explore the possibility that we have been wrong about something. It might mean listening to someone who has a different perspective from us, who might seriously challenge our perspective. Perhaps it means taking a chance to do something new and risking failure or rejection or pain. Maybe it means apologizing or asking for forgiveness even if there's no guarantee that it will be accepted or offered. 
Friends, this week, especially as we approach Inauguration Day, when tensions are likely to be high, I invite you to identify how you can choose courage and vulnerability and to commit to doing one concrete thing to show it. The world does not need more bravado right now. The world needs the kind of self-emptying love that Christ made possible. The self-giving courage that Christ calls us to as his witnesses in this world. As you take on this challenge, may you know and trust that you will be upheld by the one who goes ahead of you, paving the way for the courageous vulnerability that tears down walls, speaks across divides, and brings healing to the world. Amen. As you listen and perhaps sing along to our hymn of response, I Surrender All, I encourage you to prayerfully pay attention to the words, to allow some of those layers of self-protection you have built up around yourself to fall away and to surrender all to the loving God who calls you into vulnerability and who preserves you through all things.
As we think about having courage to be vulnerable, our finances are one of the last things most of us want to be open about. And many times how we use our finances is one of the hardest decisions that we'll make in our day-to-day -day life. But what a privilege it is to give to God and sow into the ministry of the church. Verse 7 in today's text reminds us that Christ gave up his divine privileges and took on the humble position of a slave to be born as a human being. As we reflect on all Christ gave for us, let us be courageous and intentional about how we give back to him. Friends, you are invited to give to the ministry of Christ through Titusville United Methodist Church by mailing a check into the church or going to our conference website. In a spirit of gratitude and giving, let us pray together over this week's offerings. God of perfect love, we ask that you receive these gifts as a sign of our knees bending before you, of our tongues confessing that you are God. Pour out your blessings upon our gifts that they might serve others in humble love that glorifies your holy name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Take My Life and Let It Be. Please sing along with Lamb as you feel comfortable. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my will and make it Thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. At thy feet is treasure store. Take myself, I will be ever. Our sending words this morning come from Brene Brown. Vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up when you can't control the outcome. Friends, go forth in the courage to be vulnerable for the sake of others, as Jesus Christ himself was vulnerable, vulnerable for your sake. Do so in the power of the one God who calls us into relationship with God's self and into solidarity with all creation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.